Hello everyone, this is Monica Dulian from Always the Heart with Alison Kate with episode six. We are six episodes in the series where we talk about the bloated world, the overdoing, overachieving, overdoing anything, overthinking, over speaking, over collecting, and how it is reflected in the state of our mental, emotional, and physical health. And do we really have to do it? So I myself, what I do, I work with the body and the psychosomatic causes of problems and ailments. And Alison Kate, she is a hypnotherapist. She is also a yoga teacher. She uses many different modalities to really help you find your center, find your core, and start creating a life that is actually supporting you instead of us constantly responding to being bombarded with information, with things we have to achieve. And this is actually what we're going to be talking about today. So welcome, Alison Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to be with you all again. Hi, guys. Um, so what happened over this weekend? Alison sent me a video. Uh, it was a very short video about directed towards women about the messaging we women receive from the outside world, not only our parents, our spouses, our partners, but also media and the public in general. And how we should be, what is it that we should do to be successful, to be accepted, to be valued. And the information is many times so conflicting. Like what hit me in that video, and maybe at the end of this video, we can even include it or include the link about dressing up. Don't dress yourself in a way that it's going to be provocative, but you have to be a little sexy. Don't be loud, be quiet, but stand up for yourself and be bossy. And it's like, how many times you, Alison, heard that from even friends, right? When we're growing up, you're taking a new issue of Cosmopolitan. One month, they're telling you one thing. Another month, they're telling you another thing. So that over-messaging, what is it creating in a body? Like, how does it make you feel when you have conflicting information? Yeah, thanks. I, I mean, I know watching that, for me, watching that video, I felt so much, so many different emotions, like a lot of sadness, but also anger and injustice and feeling of like almost hopelessness because as women, when we get all of these conflicting messages, it's like, so that, and we can all, yeah, we can include the video, but watching all of those messages play back to back was like, how could I possibly know who I am or who to be when everything I hear and might latch onto could change the next moment or the next week? And um, I think, and it's so subtle, you know, in our sort of capitalist culture of advertising and there's advertising everywhere and even growing up for me without cell phones and things like that it was still so present yeah i love that you mentioned cosmo it's like well that was the cool thing to do and that was yes. where you know the shiny pages with all the colors and and now for the the poor teenagers and young ones that are growing up with cell phones it's like we're even more bombarded with all those messages what kind of messages were most significant for you that were hurtful uh about those one message that hit me in the middle of the video don't get raped mm, yeah. and it's like a woman's responsibility to guard herself almost and wear shapeless clothing and it, it hit me personally and i know a lot of women out there they have experienced um invited touch and attention so they know mm -hmm. exactly what that means and where the victim is put at this pedestal of a perpetrator almost like i have been asking for it right and then what really reminded me of is also my relationship with mom not that specific part but giving conflicting information i used to have problems with weight since i was a kid because of my thyroid health so one time depending on which uh public space we were in family or like public of people that i don't know mm -hmm. don't eat so much move a little more uh this uh, you're having a second piece of cake don't eat so fast and then it's like no just tell them you know that whatever is calling you out and bullying you that this is genetic you're something's going like i thought my mom said that to me so it's like mom what do you want me to do do you want me to defend myself or do you want me to uh, 
react how around food. For me, it was food growing up, and I am seeing this especially women look a certain way, but don't look a certain way. It's like, I'm thinking about what's that game of the potato head? Mr. Potato and Mrs. Yes. Potato. It's like, put yourself into little pieces and then collect them together. Only the ones that are fashionable today, right? That's true. Today, That's big true. hips. Tomorrow, it might, might be big tits. Yesterday, right. it was a small stomach. And it's, yeah. am I going to be to be accepted today? Yeah, I, I really, scenario. I resonate with that too. There was so much focus of weight and looks in my family yeah. And sort of under the, and you know, we can get into this issue larger on another episode, but just like the, the image of thin or yeah, thin being healthy. And so it's like, you're not really healthy if you have a lot of extra weight on your body and, you know, getting the message that I'm doing it wrong in multiple ways. And when you said that about um, the the message about don't get raped too that really stuck out to me because i've always enjoyed dressing funky and sometimes that means you know showing more skin or wearing things that are out of the norm and i know for me I, because i'm a dancer dancing gave me an outlet to wear more like risque clothing but in a, a scene that that was accepted yeah. And now that I'm not doing that as much anymore, it's like, well, do I just have to put these clothes away or is there a context that I can still wear them? And if you're still wearing them, how is that perceived? And I, I notice even now a big struggle in me with like how I would love to present myself mm -hmm. if I didn't have this underlying shame of my dad saying like, you can't wear that short shirt to school. So I'd put it in my book bag and change at school, you know, and all of those messages and how could I just feel comfortable with my body and my choices and not care what other people think if I wasn't, if, if all those messages hadn't been seeping in in the background all the time. Yes, yes. And I really like that you said the word context because it's like I have to choose and morph myself depending on a situation. Uh, and my home growing up, there used to be a saying translating into English, it would sound like kids and fish don't have a voice. Like you're not supposed to talk. But then my mom said, don't let anybody um, tell you what to do. Stand up for yourself. It's like, stand up to everybody else, but I can't stand up to you. <laughs> Which one is it? So that internal confliction of not knowing who I am. Yeah. Not knowing who I am and what I'm allowed to do. Yeah. Super confused about living. Right. And all of a sudden, it's the end of uh, high school. Choose who you want to be in the future, but I don't know who I want to be because I was always told who I need to be. Yes, absolutely. I, that I feel choice. Like, so yeah, and sort of adding on to that a little more esoterically, it's like, mm. you know, who who am I without all those messages? And if I am this person, that I can choose a man that likes only this kind of body, or you know, how attraction plays into that. And that's really, uh, to me, it's very sad to separate the soul from, or, you know, some deeper self with that, as far as like attraction. And I, you know, I was with my family recently and there was some conversation about like uh, my brother and my dad and overweight women. And it's like, but you're not really seeing someone for their soul because if you have a partner, do you have flexibility to change over time? And, and, can you do that and can you be accepted for that without shame or without separation because you're not how I want you to look anymore? Oh my gosh, this is so important what you said. Have the flexibility to change and also be accepted. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you met 15 years ago and this was me. I was liking this kind of music and these were my political views, but I can't evolve, mm. right? Right. And I am wondering for, for people, when do they catch themselves thinking, who am I? What is it that I like? What is it that I want to be recognized for in my life? Not because I feel that this is going to give me a sense of being superior, because all my life I felt inferior, but who is it that I actually, what expresses me? And for me, that was college and being all the funky 
hair I used to have and just like experimenting. But that should happen so early. You know, little kids even choosing what kind of subject they want to do at any given time, but everything is scheduled. You have to do this, you have to do that, but have much homework. And those little kids, no wonder they have attention deficit disorder because they're not, cannot focus on things that they like. They're right. always told, do this, right. do that. Have fun, be creative, but also <laughs> uh, do all these things, right? First. Right, and if you... You know, if I like this kind of music, then maybe I'm supposed to have this kind of friends or it's yes. like we, we box people in in all these different ways. It's like doesn't let A cross with Z or Y or X. And and that's confusing because then we shape our reality and our personality yeah. to fit these things. I mean, I know in high school, I sort of felt lost and then got in with a group of kids that for better or worse, like probably wasn't the best for me, but I was customizing myself to fit with this group instead of, instead of asking who I am. And as a young adult into my 20s, and that's been sort of my journey of like, well, who am I separate from all of those things? And, and I'm not even able to decipher when I'm connected or like plugged into society as we know it, the only way that I find those answers is when I go really deep within and get quiet and I'm not bombarded by all those messages that it's, it's yes. so hard to escape. <laughs> it is, it is very hard. And on top of that, it's not only the sex and gender and who our parents want us to be. There's also, you know, the community, what religion you grew up in, what are the family values? There are some things we don't talk about in this family, let's say. And when you have a lot of pain around it and it's being kept a secret, it's going to grow and grow until it blows like a balloon. You cannot. So what is it that you can and cannot do? How do you know it? Like it even gives me the question of uh, morality. We have so much learned morality that goes against what we know is right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't listen to that because the majority is telling us it's better for the society, right? Um, one of those things like for me personally is putting people in jails, mm -hmm. punishing them for their pain. There is a reason why people do crime. It's not because they wake up, I'm going to be a bad person today right. there is a backstory to it as well and many times comes from not having not seeing the choice because we were never given the choice right. because we were always told what to do right i mean i know like for me growing up it's like you're taught it's a it's a privilege and um it gets you ahead to be attractive and it gets yes. you ahead you know with all the racial things that are going on in the world mm -hmm. right now, but even like it gets you ahead if you're smart and you study and it gets you ahead if you major in this thing instead of doing like something in the arts, like maybe I was more drawn to or, mm -hmm. um, and all of these, these messages that, it, you know, ways in which we're meant to get ahead and then sort of judgment around what some people would call like the more fringe of society, like artists or people that don't fit the mold or mm -hmm. don't, aren't able to be successful in school because their brains just don't work in a linear fashion that um, is, is generated in our school. But there's, yeah. so, there's so much brilliance there that's being lost. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And for those of you who are interested in the esoteric meaning of times, <laughs> why is it that we are having so much children being born on autistic spectrum and also with Down syndrome, yep. right? We have to adjust our schooling system to them because we have just so many. Our system is not able to support them. And if we look at it from an esoteric perspective, there is a lesson there that we can be who we are because there will be value for that in the future. And also it helps us see ourselves how awesome is it to be put through a system and come out looking the same as everybody? It's like a, it's like a factory. Mm -hmm. It isn't. And how awesome would it be to actually be your unique self where you fit into the society because of your unique gifts and talents yeah. that are not um, praised based on how much you can make, 
how much money you can make, but how you can improve. And think about your old grandma at home, the one that doesn't earn money, the one that sleeps several times a day, just goes to sleep, right? How much love she brings. Maybe your grandma at your home wasn't like this, but in general, let's think about the Tweety Bird and the, the, the cats in that cartoon, that grandma. She yeah. brings love, she brings care, she cooks the best, best food, and she cannot make money, but the value that is in that person. Yeah. Do we need to wait until we are 70, 80 years old to be seen for our value? Right. No one cares about how that grandma looks like, if she has teeth or doesn't. Right. She's yeah, and not, and not only that, but to, you know, that's from like the external in, but do we need to wait until we're that old to stop looking at ourselves with that lens or that judgment? Yes. Um, you know, it's like, so I did a workshop around this video before mm -hmm. and one of the, the context was to write down all the messaging that we've received. And so for the viewers, I would challenge you to take out a piece of paper and even come up with one topic. You know, you can say, well, what are all the messages that I got growing up that actually aren't serving me? But start with specifics, like start with sexuality or start with race or start with economics or start with the career goals. And in each category, it's like, and it was really helpful to hear others' responses because I had a whole long list and for all the other messages that a lot of people shared, I'm like, oh yeah, that's me too, that's me too. But it wasn't even things that I was conscious of. And so to do this, even if you have people with you at home or in the context of a group is so helpful because all of these messages, so, well, at least so many of them are subconscious. You know, we're conscious of some of them, but as we share and as we choose to explore this topic, we become, we bring them more to the light. We become more conscious. So then it's a choice of, do I want to continue to follow this messaging or this programming, or do I want to let this go and see the opposite or some other version being just as viable and just as much possible in my reality as this one that I, I grew up with? Yes. And what I like about the exercise that you just proposed is just awareness. It's not about judging. If you have a small body that fits into the current <laughs> uh, um, understanding of what beauty is, um, tall, slim, trim, right? And you feel attacked for looking like this, it's, it's valid to see that. That maybe you as a person are not being attacked for not having big hips and being, as a woman, round. Women who are round, why aren't you skinny? Right, so it's, it's, we have to understand that it's from both sides. It's not okay to be poor, but it's not okay to have money either because people who have money, they have no morals. Right. Like where are you, how are you supposed to, to eat? Do you even have a choice? Can, right. Do you always have to be in the middle or change minutes to minutes, right? Yeah, and you know, during this conversation, we've talked about more of a female perspective because we are both cisgendered women here, yes. but um, also want to acknowledge that men have all of these programs and in some ways better, in some ways worse, and all of the ways that they're taught to not express their emotions or have to be strong or look a certain way or perform a certain way to make sure they're successful is, is equally damaging. And then we have these two sort of opposite polarities or extremes, and there's a lot of people that are not you know don't come are more on the spectrum and then we don't have belonging because we don't necessarily want to be associated with either extreme the things in the middle are undefined and and so i guess another practice or sort of homework for this week that i would offer is um based on louise hayes like mirror mirror practice of like going back to the the do we really see the souls of other people instead of just the outward projection. So first we, it's easier to see that in other people if we can see it in ourselves. So to spend two or three or five minutes per day looking in the mirror, looking into your own eyes. And if you want to throw some affirmations in there because it feels good, that's awesome. But even if you just do it in silence and you just sit there and look into your own eyes, See if you can recognize something deeper in yourself. See if you can recognize what some people call the soul, what some people call the spirit, 
what some people call, you know, like the inner, the heart or anything physical, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's can you see yourself in a different way than when we look in the mirror and we're taking in the full physical form. Exactly. I love that exercise and it's mm -hmm. scary for the first 30 seconds, but after that, when you fall in into it your is. own eyes, it's like, I haven't seen you in a while, right? Yeah. Ah, here you are. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I know for a lot of people in the beginning, it can be emotional, but also it's like the eyes, when you really stare deep into them almost, or like if you look at a cat's eyes or some kind of animal's eyes, it's like, there's a whole universe in the eyes. They're so intricate and nuanced and you can get lost just kind of swimming and looking at all those nuances. And when you, when you look in your own eyes and you are, you know, practicing forms of self-love, I think that that can be more emotional. And when you're connecting with, okay, that's, that's my soul. That's who I am inside. But when you look into the, into your own eyes, almost like as, as sort of a trance and just like get lost in the color and the textures and all the different uh, gradients, it's, it's, uh, it's like, yeah, trance inducing. It's, it's a different yes. experience. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And now uh, also at that ask? time, <laughs> I just wanted to add, I was thinking like looking at your eyes and remember you i used to hear that different color eyes mean something different about you and i used to uh, think that i need to have different color eyes mm -hmm. to be like that person the people who have very green eyes are super outgoing and adventurous blue is all about peace and brown is about individuality whatever that thing was back then and even that i remember dreaming about having different colored eyes to be mm -hmm. a different person so awareness guys this is awesome a learning about who you are and who you are not it's 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 a very deep practice very simple practice but also practice of a lifetime we're going to be unlearning these things for a very long time and the sooner we start the more peace we're going to invite into our lives and why are we talking about this let's let's revisit, revisit that topic again that is because both Alison and I have noticed that self-inquiry and, and discovering these layers of yourself that are not true are bringing you closer to yourself so you can start building the life that you want from a genuine place instead of from a place of I don't have, thus I must have it and acquire it because without it I am nothing. No, I want to have it because I feel deserving. Not, you know, I deserve this, so I need to have it right now. I actually feel that I deserve this feeling of peace, of gratitude, of joy, of sharing, of community. I feel it in me. And there's, there's this neutrality and peace behind it instead of this nervous excitement. Even when I talk about it, imagine having your life like that and slowly going into that direction where you can yeah. be free to be yourself. Yeah, awesome. And I see my own power and I know that it's a choice. Yes. Because to be empowered means that everything is a choice. And as we bring this conscious awareness that you're talking about, it feels really good to know that I can choose a different way. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Beautifully said. So I think this is a good wrap for today to, to have that and also examine what is it that you have been told to be yeah. <laughs> and how is it no longer serving you in life. So thank you so much okay. for sending so me guys, this video. So, yeah, and guys, just please leave in the comments like all the messaging and programs that you would like to release. You know, yes. we can do it as a group intention even to see each other, witness each other's what we didn't realize was there, but we want to let go of. And then also, if you want to comment on the eye gazing process or anything like that, we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Thank you so much for your input, for your time and paying attention. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.